In the video today, I'm going to show you how to set up your Samsung Galaxy A54. I'm going to show you how to transfer all your data from an old phone to your new phone and a few more important helpful setup tips. So make sure you watch the video all the way to the end. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is swipe down from the top of the screen. I want to go over how to connect to Wi-Fi because a lot of the setup tips are going to be tied to Wi-Fi. You'll want to be connected to your home network if you have Wi-Fi. So we swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper left corner, you're going to see the first icon is your Wi-Fi icon. Take your finger and hold down on that icon for one second. This will take you to the Wi-Fi menu and it will show you a list of all of the available networks. So you'll need to tap on the network that is tied to where you currently are. For me, my network is called the Meatloaf 2.4. And this is a, it's a joke from my movie, The Wedding Crasher. So that's why I have that as the name. When you tap on the network, it's gonna ask you to enter the password. And for you guys, find your internet router or wireless box. And on the side of it should show you your Wi-Fi password. If not, ask someone who lives at your house and go ahead and enter that code. After you enter the code, you're gonna hit connect, give it a few seconds, and then in the upper right corner, you should see this little Wi-Fi icon show up, and that's gonna tell you that you're successfully connected now to your Wi-Fi network. So now that that's done, let's hit the home button. We're gonna swipe down again from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, swipe down to accounts and backup, from here, you're gonna tap bring data from old device. Now this will take you right to the Samsung Smart Switch app. And this is the app you're gonna to use to transfer all your data from the old phone. So you've done the first part correctly. On your phone, you wanna tap receive data. Then you wanna to go to your old phone and here's the old phone. I just have a phone as an example. So let's say this is our old phone. I went to the Google Play Store, which is the app you normally use to download other apps. And I just did a search. I typed in Smart Switch. And this is the app you're looking for. You want to download this app to your old phone. And when you're finished downloading it, you want to open it up and you're going to tap the opposite button. So on our new phone, we're gonna tap receive data. On the old phone, we're gonna tap send data. And once you tap those two buttons, it's going to send a code that's gonna allow you to link up the two phones together, and then it will allow you to select the items you would like to transfer from the old phone to the new phone, and then it will start the process of the transfer. So that's really all you need to know in terms of transferring data from an old phone to the new phone. Once you go to this section and tap receive data, and you select the type of phone that it is, and then you download Smart Switch on the old phone, um, the app is gonna walk you through at that point what you need to do to finish setting up the transfer, and then let the two phones sit and let the transfer take its course. So that is how you transfer data from an old phone to the new phone. Now for the next tip, I wanna show you how to keep your screen on longer. So you'll notice um, your screen is gonna go off pretty quickly. If you don't touch the screen every 15 seconds, it is gonna go off, which can be frustrating. So by swiping down from the top of the screen, going back to that settings wheel, you'll wanna go to the section that says display, and then swipe up, go to screen timeout, and set this to two minutes. Now out of the box, it's usually set to 15 minutes. I had it turned up a little bit higher, but Two minutes is really the sweet spot where you can sit, look at your phone, and you don't have to touch it every few seconds to keep the screen on. So that's the first tip I encourage you to do on your phone. The next tip is this. Hey, how do I change the wallpaper? Change your background if you wanna make it something different. There's a few ways to do this. So one, I can hold down on the home screen. And by doing that, it's gonna bring up this menu at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna tap on wallpaper and style. And from here, I can tap change wallpaper and you can see all the different stock wallpapers that are installed on the phone. There's always a lot of really cool options, especially with Samsung's. So you can pick just a different one that you like. Let's say we wanna do this one right here. 
it'll show you what it looks like to put it on the lock screen and home screen. Maybe you only want it on the home screen. You can uncheck lock screen and just show it on the home screen. Hit next and then hit done and that's it. Hit the home button and now this is our new lock screen like this. Now maybe you have a picture saved on your phone and you want that to be the lock screen picture, not one of the random pictures from the menu. Well, let me show you. Let's just go ahead and go to the camera in the bottom right corner. And I'm just gonna snap a picture of my background here. Okay, hit the home button. And now I'm gonna hold down on the home screen again. And I wanna tap on wallpaper and style again tap change wallpaper but this time I want to tap gallery and I want to tap recent right here and guess what it's going to show me the last few pictures that I've taken and this is the one that I just took if I check the box here and hit done and hit next now I can easily make this picture my new wallpaper picture I'm going to hit done hit the home button, and now that's the new wallpaper of the phone. So just that easy, you can change the wallpaper to whatever you want. You can take a fresh picture, or you can go through and look at your old pictures, and you can pick one of those to be the wallpaper for the phone. Now, for our next tip, I wanna show you how to add more pages to the home screen. Right now, if I swipe left, You'll notice I have the main screen, and then I swipe left, I have this one screen. And there's just these two pages, that's it. But maybe you wanna have multiple pages of apps. So this is really easy, swipe left, and simply take your finger and hold down on one of the apps on the screen for one second, and then drag. Dragging is just keeping your finger on the screen and then start moving your finger. And you wanna bring the app all the way to the right, and it's gonna create a new page for you, and now, I have this page, this page, and this page. So that's how you create multiple pages so you can organize your apps even easier. Now next I wanna show you how to take apps off of this screen. Maybe you say, I don't care about this Microsoft folder, I don't wanna look at that. You can simply hold down on it. So holding down means just taking your finger and put it on this section of the screen for one second. And it'll bring up this menu and guess what, I can simply tap remove and that whole folder is gone. Those apps are still on the phone, but they're no longer on the home screen. If you wanna find those apps, you all you do is swipe up and this will take you to your app drawer and it'll show you all the apps that are currently installed on the phone, okay? So you don't have to have them on the home screen, you can simply erase them and just move the apps you want to be on that screen. So for example, let's say there's a different app I do want to be on this screen. I'm gonna swipe up, and let's say I want my Samsung Notes to be on the home screen. I'm gonna hold down on Samsung Notes for one second, and then I'm gonna drag down, and now I can move it in that same spot and have it show up on the home screen. So just that easy, you can move apps to the home screen or take them off. Now, what if there's an app on the phone that you don't want at all? You say, I don't know why this is here, I'm never gonna use it, I wanna delete it. Well, let's swipe up. We're gonna to go to our app drawer section and let's look for an app that we want to permanently delete. Let's say this blocks game you want to delete permanently. I'm gonna hold down on it, but I'm not gonna drag. I'm just gonna hold down for one second this menu is gonna pop up, and now I can tap this button here, this X that says uninstall, and this will actually delete the app once I press OK. Now that app is totally gone, it's no longer on the phone. So that's how you delete apps off of the phone. Now, next I wanna go over some essential apps that you'll want to download on the phone. Now just to show you, swiping up, these are all the apps that currently come on the phone. You have a couple of folders here. You have a Google folder. You have a folder with Microsoft apps. You also have a folder with some Samsung apps here. And you have a T-Mobile folder right now. Samsung doesn't put as many apps on the phone as they used to, but they do have some really helpful apps that I recommend that you also download. 
And where you'll find those apps are in the Galaxy Store. So we're gonna tap on Galaxy Store. And this takes you into Samsung's App Store. You can see all of their apps. And what you'll wanna do is go to the upper right corner, tap on the settings, or excuse me, the magnifying glass. And I'm gonna type in Samsung. And this will bring up all of the uh, apps that Samsung has built for their phones. Let's hit search, bottom right corner, tap on the magnifying glass. And this will allow us to now go through and see all of the uh, apps that Samsung has built for their phones, but maybe are not installed on the phone. For example, Samsung email, really great app. Tap on this drop, this little arrow pointing down, and that's gonna download Samsung's email app, which will be a really great option to use for checking your emails. Now as we swipe up, Samsung has a blockchain app that's really good as well. They have the Samsung browser. I also recommend downloading that one there. And just scroll through. They have a news app that's really good. They have different fonts, different emojis. If you have a Samsung appliance, you'll probably wanna download the Samsung Family Hub. That's another great app there. Samsung Flow is an app that lets you use your Samsung phone connected with a Samsung laptop or Samsung tablet. So swipe through here and just see if any of these apps stand out to you. And if so, download them. Video Library is also a really great app as well. It helps you organize your videos so you can look at just videos and not have to look at videos and pictures mixed together. Those are some of the best ones. You can keep swiping and scrolling to see if there's anything else that you like, but those are the main ones that I recommend. Now, let's hit the home button. The next important setup tip that I want to encourage you to do, especially if you're a parent, swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, swipe to your left. We're going to hit the plus, and this will bring up a menu with even more options you have to select. NFC, screenshot, microphone access, swipe left again, tap on, so you not tap, you're actually gonna put your finger on the icon and drag it. So the kids mode is one of the buttons you'll wanna bring down. So just put your finger on it, hold, and drag it down. And I would say swipe left, the live transcribe is another great app as well. Hold down on that one, bring it down here. And also the secured folder, another great app, helps you to really uh, keep your uh, personal files separated um, if you set this up. So hold down on that, drag that down as well, and let's hit done. Okay, so now once we hit done, you're gonna tap on kids and hit start and take a few seconds. This is gonna download the Samsung Kids app, which is, it's more than an app really. It's basically, it's a separate section of the phone where you can set up uh, specific apps and content just for kids. So if you ever have to pass your phone to your kid in a moment where you're working or you're busy or in a conversation and you want to occupy them but you don't want them to mess up anything on your phone, you don't want them to call anyone you'll wanna go into Samsung Kids first and have it set up. So hit continue. The setup is pretty quick. We're gonna hit continue. It'll ask you to set up a pin code. So if you need to get out of the section, you'll have to put that code in. We're just gonna make it something easy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then we can hit allow. It'll send you notifications. And so what you'll find in here is there will be certain um, apps that are already pre-installed and you can also download other apps as well. And this is again a great section to just have set up and ready. So if you ever pass your phone to your kids, you can basically give it to them in this section and they cannot exit this without your permission. If I hit the back button, all it's gonna do is prompt me to enter the pin code and if I don't have that code, I'm stuck in this section. It's a very good way to make sure that they don't mess up anything on your phone while they're using it. Upper right corner, tap on the three dots here. Um, you'll wanna play around with the settings and the parental controls. Uh, for example, editing the home screen. 
this is where it'll allow you to download more apps. So if we hit the plus, it'll now let you go in and select an app that's currently on your phone and move it over to that section. So um, if there's like a PBS Kids app that your kid normally uses or there's like YouTube Kids, you'll wanna download the app first and then go into the Kids Mode section and do this and then you can select it and add it to that section. So guess what, now YouTube is added to this section. Now I would not encourage you to add the regular YouTube app because your kid's gonna have access to the entire YouTube library, which I don't think that's a good idea for kids, but um, YouTube Kids is a better app. Uh, PBS Kids, um, there's a lot of kid-friendly apps you can, you can have added to this section where they can't get into any trouble um, using the phone. So anyway, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I just wanted to show you how to set it up. And now, let's see, let's save this. And we're going to back out, put in our code. And now we're out of that section. If you ever need to go back there quickly, guess what? It's a swipe down, swipe down again, and swipe to your left. So we're here. Let me just show you one more time. Swipe down, swipe to your left, and just tap on kids and that'll take it right into the kids mode section and guess what, your life is gonna be so much easier. Okay, let's get out of this. There's a few more things I wanna show you and then we'll be done with the video. Okay, next thing is I wanna show you how to set up a passcode for your phone. So if you'd like to lock the phone so no one can just pick up your phone and use it, here's how you do that. Swipe down from the top of the screen, upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, and we're gonna go down to lock screen, and then screen lock type. And here, you have the option to set up a passcode. So you can do just a, a number pin, a more advanced high security pin, a pattern. Um, you can turn off any type of lock altogether, and you can turn on your face unlock and fingerprint sensor. So first, let's set up a pin, hit pin, and we're just gonna make it the same thing, one, two, three, four. And by the way, if you guys hear those sounds, um, it's really close to 4th of July, and so on my block, they start celebrating really early, so if you hear those, those loud noises in the background, it's just fireworks outside, so uh, don't, uh, hopefully that's not disturbing your learning. Okay, let's hit change pin, one, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, it's gonna ask you to put it in a second time, hit next, use anyway, and there we go. So just that easy, our pin is now set up on the phone. So, um, now, if I were to turn off the screen or put it to sleep and turn it back on and try to swipe up, it's gonna ask me to enter a pin code before I can sign to the phone. And there's our pin code. Um, you may have noticed on the screen it said a six digit pin code as recommended. I just did a four digit code, but obviously do six so that yours will be stronger. Now that we have set up a pin code, we can now set up the fingerprint and the biometric security options as well. So up here under lock screen, we can tap screen lock type. We're gonna enter our code, press continue, and now we can select face or fingerprint. Now, for this phone, keep in mind, the fingerprint sensor is built into the screen. So I'm gonna show you how to set up the fingerprint. The face unlock is pretty self-explanatory. You simply hold the phone up to your face and it's gonna take a scan of your face, but let me show you how to do the fingerprint because that one requires a little more effort. So let's hit fingerprint, continue, register, and I'm just gonna take my finger and just start tapping in this section. But you'll wanna pick up your finger and try to move it and put it in different spots because it's trying to learn your entire finger, not just one section of it. So keep lifting and putting your finger down and trying to move your finger just a little bit each time. And here we go. Okay, so now it has programmed our fingerprint. And if the phone is locked, 
and we tap the button. I can take my finger, place it over the fingerprint uh, icon at the bottom here, and it will unlock the phone. Now, one recommendation for you is always set up multiple fingerprints because what if one of your fingers has oil on it or your hands wet or a lot of different scenarios can come up where it may not read the fingerprint on one side. So I always try to program one finger from each hand just to cover myself in case one of my hands has something on it. And that's it. So this is the end of our video. I hope it was helpful. The goal was just to show you how to get set up transfer those files, some important tweaks that'll just help make the phone easier to use. If the video was helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscriber. I'm your tech guide, Wayne, and I just love to educate people on how to use smartphones and try to make it simple for any user. So uh, that is my goal with this channel. Um, if you'd like to see more videos, hit that subscribe button. And leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts if the video was helpful. I always love to hear your feedback. You can find more helpful videos here and here. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.